something as big as the internet, as ubiquitous as the internet, but you're actually able to own a piece of it. Um, so that's that's the big difference, and, and that is what is uh, remarkable in a lot of ways. Hello, and welcome to Wealthy Value. In today's video, American broadcaster, Bitcoin bull investor, and businessman Max Kaiser discusses the incredible speed of Bitcoin adoption and growth of the network, his views on some powerful politicians, and what the world will look like when Bitcoin becomes a global currency. Make sure to stick around till the end of this video, where Max Kaiser elaborates why countries will soon start panic buying Bitcoin. If you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the post notifications. Let's dive right into the video. Well, you know, the Volcano Bond in El Salvador can pay off the IMF loans, pay off all the loans. They, El Salvador could be a completely debt-free country with uh, Volcano Bonds. And that's a threat to the U.S. dollar because it means that if El Salvador can escape U.S. hegemonic power and the colonialization in the Central America and Latin America, then so can all these other countries do the same thing. Honduras, by the way, was going to declare Bitcoin legal tender at this conference. Uh, they got wind of it down there in the IMF and in Washington, D.C. Uh, D.C. sent in a plane load of suits to Honduras, threatened to kill everybody there unless they uh, chose to, to make a different decision. So it was the uh, economic hitmen showed up in Honduras threatening violence. So Paul Krugman in the New York Times when asked, what backs the U.S. dollar? <clears throat> he said, men with guns. And that's true. That's what backs the U.S. dollar, violence. What, we see it every day. This is uh, the American empire is based on violent uh, genocide across the world to support the dollar. Well, inevitable, you know, that can mean a few different things. So um, inevitable in terms of being a global hyper Bitcoinization, uh, we're seeing, I think, I guess you'd have to, com Scott, compare it to Internet adoption in the 90s. Uh, you know, I was running an Internet company in the 90s and uh, even after Netscape went public and you had a big surge of, of use of the internet, there was a period there around 1997 or so where people like Paul Krugman of the New York Times and others were questioning whether or not this internet thing was going to survive or was, was it just a fad. Tax machine. I think we're at that hockey stick moment where you see in the next six to nine months doubling of usage from 150 million to 300 million and then pretty soon we're going to be over a billion and then Bitcoin will be ubiquitous and entrenched and part of everyday life, and people won't even be thinking about it. They'll be using it, but they won't even know they're using it, just like people use the internet, and they don't really think about the protocol that underlies the internet and how it works and why it works. They just use it. Same thing with Bitcoin. It just becomes part of the fabric of our reality. Yeah. With the internet, it wasn't actually a price that was traded in terms effect. of the uh, where it was in the adoption cycle. Um, having said that, I'm sure a lot of people would have loved to have the opportunity to actually buy part of the internet, uh, which is what you can do with Bitcoin. You're actually buying something as big as the internet, as ubiquitous as the internet, but you're actually able to own a piece of it. Um, so that's, that's the big difference, and, and that is what is uh, remarkable in a lot of ways. Well, the, the design of the protocol invites everyone to join, and it also invites attacks. And, and, and the game theoretical aspects of it are intact and uh, they're working beautifully. So you want as many people to be participating as possible. You want both Russia and Ukraine uh, buying Bitcoin. Uh, you want every country to be buying it. Uh, you want Wall Street buying it. You want Wall Street trading it. You want Wall Street creating all the derivatives they want to create on top of the Bitcoin stack. The greatest thing we have, though, is the ability to pull our keys off the exchanges, so if they want to create a multi-tiered Ponzi scheme based on a Bitcoin base layer like they do in the gold market, for example, which hasn't had good price discovery now for over 10, 15 years, uh, you know, we have the ability to pull the private keys off the exchange essentially and collapse any major Ponzi scheme. There will be credit cycles. I mean, you know, Bitcoin will still be used as collateral. There's a lot of products here of that are being introduced for mortgages and other types of leveraged products. And that's fine. Uh, it's pristine collateral. Michael Saylor is now, you know, borrowing uh, against his Bitcoin position at um, to buy Bitcoin. To buy Bitcoin, you, if you can borrow money at these artificially low rates that the central banks have kept so low as part of a failed bank policy now for years, and you can buy Bitcoin, you're going to um, 
you're going to exploit this incredible arbitrage between the central bank totally mishandling policy for over 20 years now and the presence of this pristine, perfect money Bitcoin. And so Michael Saylor sees that and he's taking advantage of that. Remember that pretty much the Michael Saylor playbook is the Trace Mayer playbook. We give a shout out to Trace Mayer. Other companies and other individuals follow that model. Uh, they have the white hot breath of inflation breathing down their neck and inflation is breaking out as we've been saying for a while and it's not transitory and it's entrenched it's it's a cyclical turn the bond market now is over the 40-year bull market in bonds is finished yeah. so this is a you know commodities are now in charge paper assets that have been running the show for 40 years that period is over the narrative of countries are going to outlaw bitcoin to countries are going to start panic buying bitcoin that's the difference so we're still there's a few countries are still in the th frame of mind that they need to outlaw or regulate Bitcoin. And particularly in the US, when you hear people like Brad Sherman or Elizabeth Warren, or there's another congressperson out in California now who's attacking El Salvador, and we need to protect the dollar from El Salvador. Oh my gosh. I've never seen such an ill-informed, financially illiterate fuckwit in my life. And she's actually in a position of power and people listen to her. That's a, very sad for America. It's America's loss. You know, the rest of the world's looking at that, rubbing their hands and saying, Keep talking, bitch, because we got the commodities. Just like the protocol is decentralized, so too will the world and the powers of the world, the countries of the world, and the people of the world. So we're gonna have, um, if you look at an old map of the United States from 200 years ago, there were something like 150 nations in America, of Native Americans. Yes. And that's where we're going back to. We're gonna go back to thousands of nations around the world uh, running their micro nations and but everyone will be on a Bitcoin standard so it'll be very holistic very organic be able to trade with everyone will be able to trade with each other with perfect money there'll be very little violence because Bitcoin monetizes peace and love and it demonetizes war and hate uh, you know I've explained why that is before because it's unconfiscatable so you cannot use violence, like Paul Krugman suggests, to take other countries' stuff. You have to approach them with something on offer that they're willing to trade with. In this case, it would be with Bitcoin. So that's where we're heading. We're heading to de decentralization breeds more decentralization, more, and you want diversity, you want biodiversity. Uh, you know, we're, we're leaving hopefully an era where everything became monocultural, monocultures. Uh, the US is experimenting with the, the monoculture of of um, what's called cultural Marxism. Uh, that experiment will fail as it always failed. Elon Musk is now gonna be big in Twitter. Uh, you know, I think they'll bring, bring Donald Trump back. So um, we're gonna have a discourse again. We're gonna have people able to have free speech. We'll make a comeback. Max Kaiser has also put a gloomy warning for Americans regarding upcoming inflationary situations. The popular Bitcoin advocate has recently made a comment in the form of a warning stating that those who are having less than 29 Bitcoin are not going to make it. The warnings and comments came in the time when there are talks about financial situations and a tightening economy in upcoming times. Max Kaiser also has high hopes for El Salvador's Bitcoin volcano bonds. Kaiser said El Salvador could become a Bitcoin hub for Central and Latin America. The interest of Salvadoran citizens in Bitcoin has grown because Salvadorans have their own bank account on their phones. People who were not banked, which was 70% or more, now with Chivo Wallet and other wallets have the opportunity to have financial services. While reiterating his previous statement, Kaiser stated that El Salvador has the potential to become Bitcoin's Wall Street, considering Bitcoin as a legal tender and with stock market laws in this regard. He also added that it could attract huge amounts of global capital into the country. So, what are your thoughts Max Kaiser's comments regarding Bitcoin's panic buying by countries worldwide? Tell us in the comments. Also don't forget to like and subscribe. See you soon with the next video. Thank you so much for watching.